Most small and mid-sized companies in the U.S. don't sell goods and services to other countries. The 1% that does sells to only one international market, primarily Canada. But these business people are different. They are exceptions, outliers, a breed apart. Many of them sell to international buyers in dozens of countries. They gathered in Raleigh, North Carolina for a conference called Discover, one of a series of annual regional conferences organized by the U.S. Commercial Service of the Department of Commerce. The Discover 2013 conference is, I think, the third or the second or third one in this series, and it's to bring the businesses in the, the Southeast into contact with the Foreign Commercial Service executives and trade ambassadors from other countries and help North Carolina and other state uh, companies to gain access to these markets and improve our exports. The key to starting or increasing exports is to learn about new rules and regulations, about what markets are hot and what are not. Business people also come to meet commercial officers from U.S. embassies. When the officers go back to the embassies, conference participants will have a personal contact to help with market research and finding buyers. Some of the officers have brought buyers with them to match with these suppliers. These buyers are from Nigeria, one of the biggest economies in Africa. One of the officers is Rebecca Armand. She came to the Discover Conference to help U.S. companies discover Nigeria. Nigeria is the largest country in sub-Saharan Africa by population, second largest by economy. It has about 170 million people. About 20 to 30 percent of that is an emerging middle class. So this is a key fact you should know. Despite the global economic downturn over the last five years, Nigeria has experienced consistent 7% plus growth per year on the economic side, and that's just the formal side that doesn't count the informal side as well. Everybody associates Nigeria with scams, and yes, there are scams in Nigeria, but there is a tremendous amount of legitimate business to be had as well. So if you're looking for something in an emerging market, that has tremendous potential, whether it's retail or industrial, it's a great market to consider. In addition to learning about export trends, business people come to the Discover Conference to learn from each other. Here are some of the exporters who shared what they've learned. We started Urban Planet Mobile about five years ago now, in 2008. And we told, when we told people we would do mobile education, they thought we would be training our mothers how to use their cell phone. And what we do is we actually develop education products we can deliver over the mobile networks. Our lead product is Urban English, which is English language learning on mobile. And it's a, it's a very, very large market. There's about one and a half billion people trying to learn English. And so in that sense, it naturally takes us outside of the United States. So we're in 38 markets right now. And I would say about 85 to 90% of our business is export. I absolutely think our company is a better and stronger company because of our international exposure. And the reason why is because it's caused us to um, immediately diversify our workforce from day one. So in our little team, we have people on our team who are from uh, Santiago, Chile, to Lithuania, to people who are from uh, Russia and Korea, to full-time people who've come from Japan. And, and many of them have been with us three or four years. And it gives us a global perspective. It's very hard to do business worldwide from a very American-centric perspective. I think a lot of companies take the wrong attitude that they need to wait till they're a certain size to export. And really, exporting can help take you to that certain size. And I, I would encourage people to start at an earlier stage to see what they can learn from the commercial services, how they, you know, without having to go to all of these countries, they can learn a lot about where they should start, where's a good place and where's not. And I would encourage them to go much earlier than they ever expect. Transfer Point was established to distribute uh, dietary supplements for the immune system. And we only distribute what is best in its class and a very quality product. Um, a majority of our sales is in the United States, although almost 30% of our sales now are international. We started by accident or by email communication with a very small country of Croatia, and then started to intentionally seek uh, sales. 
but it isn't as expensive to do this as I thought it might be. We've done a lot of our communications and success with contracts without having to travel and without having to make the expense of a trip. So it, it's possible even for small companies. The UNIRS Commercial Service has helped us by guiding us, let's get specific, in China. They have many regulations for the label, for packaging, for contents. And um, we wanted to verify that we were within those regulations going to the country. So they helped us do the translation of the label, they provided the information of what was required to be on the label, and the U.S. Department of Commercial Services also investigated the company that we were dealing with to verify that we were with a legitimate entity. It's a third of our sales and uh, it provides a stable, steady income. When we crashed in 2008, we didn't feel it because as the U.S. currency crashed here, our sales went up particularly in the EU, and because they were taking advantage of the currency fluctuation. So we, we were stable through the whole, that whole time period, and that was because of the international market. Most people don't realize it, but 85% uh, of what's made or moved in the world today is done so by equipment that is almost 14 years old. Those pieces of equipment are breaking down. The manufacturers may be long gone or bought up by another company, and what is needed to support those electronics are no longer available readily. That's where we come in. The world's infrastructure, especially in developing nations, is in dire need of being improved, but unfortunately they don't have the financial wherewithal to do that. So. We have the capability of helping them to maintain the equipment that they currently have. And, and what uh, we always try to do is reinvent ourselves to lower our costs. We're on our third generation of websites in three years. I have had five business cards in two years. So we're always looking at how we can improve ourselves and make ourselves better. They have been very instrumental in identifying places that we need to look at and also uh, goal key services. We just, as I mentioned, we just came back from China this past week, and that was partially done through a goal key in which we met uh, two of the major manufacturers of cell phones in China, and as, ma as a matter of fact, in the world, and uh, had very successful one-on-one -on -one meetings with them to the point where a relationship is forming. So uh, they have been very instrumental in, in, in helping us in a, in a myriad of ways. Uh, about two and a half years ago, we were in 10 countries, doing business in 10 countries. And because of our connection with uh, U.S. Commercial Services and the state of North Carolina, uh, Department of Commerce and the trade specifically, and the SBTDC, Small Business uh, Technical Development Center, we've gone from 10 countries to 65 in the course of two and a half years, and we couldn't have done it without their assistance. We did this expansion and growth without having any salespeople or anybody in country. So what we did was we took the information uh, and developed a, a, a web presence that is probably second to none right now, uh, and, and, and using um, YouTube, uh, all the latest social networking. We discovered some things about our company that uh, we use to push forward in the markets. And, that's, and, we, and as a result, we continue to reinvent as we, as we go along almost daily. Small U.S. companies are making a big impact in the world. Want to be the next one to expand your customer base globally? Contact your local Export Assistance Center Visit export.gov or call 1-800-USA-TRADE.